So the flying device here is a suspending um, indicator flexi worm. So um, flexi worm, be, I suppose, mostly known for being one of um, Colin McLeod's um, fly patterns. Um, Colin has a, has a bunch of brilliant um, other fly patterns that uh, you can you can buy online. Uh, this is a slight variation and of course so a lot of us like to tie our own flies as well. So um, this one is obviously designed to hang uh, perpendicular um, or a right angle to the, to the water surface and that's why the front legs are hanging back on this pattern um, you can tie it uh, to hang parallel if you like to the um, water surface as well if you want that presentation wherein I usually tie the, tie the legs forward uh, on the front so um, it uses a, a little cider or indicator um, and it, it has a, a length of a fluorocarbon um, which says this, this one here is just over an inch so you can decide what length you want it to hang but if you're fishing for a in very shallow water and you want the fly to hang just a bit below the surface this is a this is a good way of of achieving that and you can tie them as I say for the fly to to hang um, in different ways as well. So the cider is just a piece of yarn. Um, in this case, it's a Semperfly floating poly yarn, um, and I've attached it to a piece of um, light um, fluorocarbon, and then I've threaded the fluorocarbon through basically a little disc that I've cut off of the end of some five mil um, booby cord, and you just thread it through and just a dot of glue. On the knot before you snug it tight and that'll keep it there so i'll show you one here it says um it's ready to to roll so we'll attach this to a fly and obviously it's up to you how short you want to trim the the cider afterwards uh, you can use different colors there's a as you say there's a white you can black brown yellow just just using brown on this this particular pattern so let's get to tying it. Let's grab a hook here. So the hook I'm putting in the vise here is a Camasan B1, B175 heavy wet. And the thread I'm going to use on this is a, it's a UTC uh, 140 waxed in red. It's a good flat thread. You need to use whatever, whatever brand you like yourself. Um, make sure you're using the flat thread. Um, it helps. It helps keep the keep the keep the body slim and um, doesn't cut through the the flexi floss or span flex material that you're going to use for your legs. So um, really getting to the end of this now. So some red uh, flexi floss or span flex for the for the legs. And this particular red I'm using is a nice bright red, which is a Vineyard product, but um, Sabai do one as well. There's a few similar ones. So I'm going to bring the thread down to the bend, so this will allow me to see what length my tail is. And you're looking for about two and a half times the length of the hook shank. Um, it's better to go a little bit long and trim it back after than to go too short anyway. That's for sure. So a couple of tight turns just at the start, just to just to get it in place, and then as you come forward, a little bit looser turns because you'll see the tread. Even this is as a wax tread, it does slip a little bit. You could put maybe an extra bit of wax on, but if you use light light pressure as you edge forward, you'll find that the the span flex will stay on top and then once you get to behind the eye I'm going to go right up behind the eye on this and just lock it down okay and you 
So use the bit of movement that start right. Now I want to basically try and cut my legs roughly the same length, so I'll catch them all together up and just trim the front ones here. And that's those done. Next thing I'm going to do is attach my rib. So I'm coming back down with tighter, tighter pressure onto the shank. I'll just cover up the flexi floss. I'm going to come back up to a position a little bit back from from the eye here, and I want to leave a you know like a quarter of an inch, leave a little piece of this flexi floss rib sticking up. It gives me something to grab hold of. When I want to trim off, so just put it on this, and I'll just put it into the spring, which is a handy thing to have if it'll go in there and stay there. Tighten that. Um, so that's going to be our rib. So this thread is slightly darker than the flexi, so I'm going to go up and down a little bit. I don't want to build the body up too much, but. I just want to make sure that basically the, the rib material is, is is brighter. So I just want to make sure that I have a nice a nice underbody. And we'll attach the cider. I'm just going to go with about an inch. It's easier to attach the cider at this stage than at the beginning. So attach the cider here. I'm just going to come back, come back a small bit. Just give yourself a bit of room to get a couple of turns in front. If you want it to sit up at a right angle to the hook shank, catch our, our mono, bring it down. What you want to do then is turn it around and come back over the top. And you can use slightly open turns here because we'll go back down and over it again once more at the end. So at this stage, if you want to be extra secure you can add a little bit of glue um, if you have brush on glue that'd be good the stuff I have here is in a tube so I'm just going to squeeze a bit onto a needle and I'm just going to apply it with the needle here that should be fine careful with glue of course and then I'm going to come down once more, just get that dark red on the body. This thread doesn't look that dark, but it is darker than the, the rib material. I'm going to get our sighter, and I'm going to get a couple of turns in front. That's what's going to stand it up a bit. And so I cut back that tiny bit from the eye. I'm going to get a rib material. I'm just going to come up in slightly open turns. Till we get behind our indicator and then we're going to give it maybe probably take about three turns apply a bit of pressure just to get that to stand up and then lock this off just about got away with it really normally i'd say two but i'm gonna give an extra one because it slipped a bit pull everything back three or four Turns in front to lock off, and then I'm just going to play one hitch first. See how everything looks. It's not looking too bad. Okay, slip off this. Be careful not to cut off your slider. So I'm going to be coating all this with UV resin. So um, it's up to you. You can put in a whip finish, but in this case, I'm just going to I'm just going to add a couple of hitches and. I'm going to start applying the resin. So the hitches are likely to slip once you have the resin applied. So we'll go on it all around. Hopefully you can see that. Just that's applying the coat all around. So at this stage, with the resin on, I'm going to snip off my thread. So, I'm going to give it a shot at the UV torch. So, 
comes the all around. And there's a nice sort of striped effect. Just looking at it there now. So it's up to you if you want, just for just an extra bit, you can add just an extra tiny bit of resin around the post. Just hold it in that upright position and give it another shot of the UV torch. And there you have it. That's going to keep the fly hopefully sitting in that sort of position. You can trim this after this, this, this um, cider post or whatever you want. And there you go. So it works as a fly, as a, as a cider. Um, if you're using more than one fly or fish it on its own in those really shallow um, places where you need to just suspend the fly just, just below the surface. Um, give it a try.